sound waves, just like that which you heard from my mouth, travel at around 340 meters per second. Pretty impressive, right? But if you compare it to the speed of light, not so much. See, light travels 10 times faster than sound. Traveling at almost 300 million meters per second, it is, as we know it, the fastest object in the universe. Right? Maybe. Scientists in the 1960s, Summerfield and Fieldberg, didn't think so. They thought that another particle, called a tachyon, derived from the Greek word tachys meaning fast, could travel faster than light. But if this was true, what would it mean for particle physics to know of an object traveling faster than light? Let me tell you. Before we understand how particle physics is affected by tachyons, we must first understand how the tachyons behave. In the video in front of you, you see two aliens, a green and a yellow. Let's assume for a minute that the green one is a tachyon and the yellow is a photon or light. As I have mentioned before, the green one or the tachyon always moves faster than the photon or light. But what exactly does this mean? I mean, We've all heard of faster than light communication, and this could be implied here, right? Using tachyons to send messages over light years of distances away in an instant. But it all seems too good to be true. According to Einstein's theory of relativity, if there was faster than light communication, it would violate the principles of causality and relativity. Causality is the basic understanding of the cause, the effect, and the dependency between the two that we're all comfortable with in our everyday lives. But how do tachyons actually break this principle? Let me tell you, picture this. You have a tachyonic device that you use to send a message to your friend who is light years of distances away. The interesting phenomenon that's actually taking place here is that your friend who is light years of distances away receives the message before you can even send it. And it's the same message that you were going to send. How is this possible? Let's visit the theory of relativity again. Einstein mentioned that if you're going really, really fast, perhaps faster than light, the time around you must be moving slower. So we can safely assume that tachyons moving faster than light also must be experiencing this slower time going on for them. Let's apply this to the example. The example was, you use a tachyonic device to send your friend, who is light years of distance away, a faster than light message. But we concluded that your friend actually receives the message before you can hit send, which is kind of mind-boggling. But let's use the theory of relativity to actually explain this. So you have a tachyonic device, you hit send, and the faster than light message goes through space, but it experiences a slow time moving on. So it actually goes back in time to the point where you haven't hit send yet and it reaches your friend. So you can see it's all about going back in time and reaching your friend before you can hit send. Now your friend reads the message and of course he or she has to reply back. So they use a tachyonic device to send me a message back. But remember I haven't hit send yet but they already got the message. So. Now, they experience a similar phenomenon. They send the message, but the message goes back in time for them and reaches me. But still, I haven't hit send yet. So, in other words, what happens is, my intention to the, my friend was to write a how are you message. So, I load my how are you in my tachyonic device. I get ready to fire. But before I even fire, I get a message saying that I'm good. And it's by my friend. So you can see how tachyons violate causality. It's not a simple cause and effect. It's not me sending a message to my friend, therefore they replying. It's not that. In fact, there is no noticeable cause in faster than light communication. It's before I even send the message to my friend, my friend replies to me. So you can see how this idea of tachyons was rejected by many physicists, including Albert Einstein, because it violates causality. So I've laid the facts down for you. But the real question is, do you believe that we'll ever reach faster than light communication?